The next category of notation I want to talk about are the idea of subscripts. And subscripts can be a bit confusing because we actually use them to mean a variety of different things. The first thing that we'll use a subscript for is to denote a specific version of a variable. So for instance, x is frequently used to mean position, and we can give it subscripts such as a 0 or an i to mean the initial value or the starting value. And this is something you'll see a lot. The book uh, will typically use i to mean initial value. I might switch between 0 and i. One reason you might not want to use i is if later you have a 1, i and 1 can look pretty similar. So denoting the initial value of a quantity comes up a lot, and we use a subscript to do that. The second thing that's related to this is denoting a final value, which we'll frequently use a subscript of f for that. So when you write it, make sure that it's clear that it's a little bit smaller than the variable itself, and we write it a little bit lower down. Now occasionally, if you're just typing in an email, it's not really possible to do that. It might not be very easy to. So it's OK to either use a little bar to indicate subscript or to just write that as xf. So the second thing that we use subscripts for, rather than just denoting whether you're talking about the, the initial value, the final value, or maybe numbering multiple values in between, is to denote directions. And specifically, these are going to be component directions. So you see here I've written v sub subscript x. And this means the component of the velocity in the x direction. Now one thing to note here is that there isn't a vector symbol here. So this in itself is a scalar. By writing the x here, I've told you what the direction is. So there's not actually going to be a vector quantity here. This is just in itself a scalar. So that subscript of x could also be y to imply that it's in the y direction. Now finally, the last thing that we use subscripts for is simply naming a variable to make it more clear what object we're talking about. We're going to have problems where we maybe have multiple objects interacting, and they might have different forces, or they might have different speeds. So you need to make it clear which speed or which force you're actually talking about. So this here is the vector v, so for velocity, sub b. So what does this b mean? In lack of a context, you don't know. But in this problem, it could be a ball, it could be a box, or maybe we're talking about the speed of a person named Bobby. Now, one thing you want to be careful of is if you have a problem where you have a ball and a box and a person named Bobby, don't use B for all three, clearly. And something that's really helpful at the start of the problem is, again, if you tell me what you're trying to do. So when you're starting off your problem and you write that, you could then say that this represents the velocity of Bobby. Now, the reason that that's helpful to do that is that someone else might choose a different notation. Maybe they're thinking of Bobby as a person, and so they might use a subscript of P. Or they're thinking of Bobby as a runner, so they use a subscript of R. None of those things are wrong, but to make the problem as clear as possible in your communication of it, you want to really define what your notation is.